Hi! In this video, we'll continue looking at Shinobi prosthetic tools. Earlier, we discussed shuriken and firecrackers, and today we'll talk about flame vent and Shinobi axe and their related items. As usual, we'll quickly go over the disclaimers, legend, and sources. If it's not the first time around, feel free to skip ahead. Number one, use common sense. Please do not assume that I have access to some secret true knowledge. I'm just entertained by reading Sekiro in Japanese. My law theories are just theories, so treat them accordingly. Number two, I am not a professional translator, I have never worked in localization. Yes, I will say that something is translated poorly and something is not, and it will be my personal point of view. Ultimately, my goal is to give you the information so you can see if the localization was good or not, whether something important was lost or not. My opinion is just that, and I choose to share it. As usual, the transcriptions I give do not follow all academic rules and I don't think it's necessary, they are just here to represent the pronunciation in case you're curious. All sources I used for this research will be listed in the description box below, along with all the additional information that I referenced throughout the video, so you can read more if you're interested. There you will also find a link to my original blog post if you want to read it through. Before Wolf encounters Flame Barrel in Harada Estate, he has a chance to learn about it from Anayama. If Wolf pays for the information, he will receive Flame Barrel Memo, where Anayama carefully describes what he saw during the night of the attack. This note was written by Anayama several years ago, when he wasn't an honest businessman, but a bandit. First of all, he doesn't know what to call this item, so he and his gang call it Higaderutsutsu, fire spewing barrel, a barrel from which fire comes. Secondly, this note, that he clearly wrote for himself, is labeled as lucrative info number 36, which I think is a very fitting and a pleasantly concise localization of Urisona Joho, information that can be sold. If you look closely at the picture itself, you'd see that he even managed to depict the flame barrel to the best of his ability. The original description is not just a text, but a bullet list. Apparently, when Anayama realized that this flame barrel can be a piece of lucrative info, he scribbled a list of facts on a piece of paper instead of writing them down as a text in a more coherent way. The language used in the description is quite simple and uses onomatopoeia, words that phonetically imitate the sounds they describe, like English words cuckoo or hiss. When we attacked Harada Estate, noticed a barrel that spewed very big fire. Lit a bonfire for our drinking, the fire went po po. Surely a shinobi tool. Forgive me for the haphazard style of this translation, I just wanted to show you how expressive the note actually is, and how hastily it was written all those years ago at the Harada estate as Anayama and his bandits were starting a fire with the flame barrel. Its original name is Hifukitsu, literally fire-breathing barrel. The translation is very accurate. The only thing that kind of catches my attention is the word resisting. The original uses kousuru, which means to confront, to oppose. Those probably would fit better. Let's look at the art book to see how it works. This picture shows that the upper metal loop in blue ink goes onto the prosthetic, and the lower loop holds the ignition chamber of the shinobi tool. The lower loop is fixed at a slight incline in relation to its counterpart. I'm guessing so that Wolf can freely move his hand. There is also a reel between them that allows him to open the barrel at will. When fitted to the shinobi prosthetic, flame barrel becomes flame vent. The original name for it, however, is exactly the same, Hifukitsutsu. There is a certain inconsistency between the description of the flame barrel and flame vent. They share a couple of identical lines, however, the English localization translates them a bit differently, and for some reason puts red eyes into quotation marks. The meaning is all there, so it's more of a structural remark. Here we can see the verb hirumu again in relation to enemy's behavior when hit with flame vent. As we discussed in the firecracker section of the previous video, it means to recoil or to flinch from something. In the localization of the description, it was translated as to tremble. I thought it would be fitting to look at the item that makes flame vent all the more pleasant to use, oil. Its original name is exactly what you would expect, abura, oil. The description overall corresponds to the original. Oil weakens enemies resistant to burn status and makes them more vulnerable. As we discussed in the previous video, most shinobi tools have a spring load upgrade, and here is the spring load flame vent. Its name falls in line with all the other spring load tools. Hifukitsu Baneshiki, literally spring load flame barrel. 
The original states that it is a flame barrel with an added mechanism that you can load up with gunpowder. This upgrade offers an alternate attack that releases an explosion. The original goes into a bit more detail when describing how the spring mechanism works. When you release the energy accumulated by the spring mechanism, the compressed air burns violently and causes an explosive flame that can blow your enemies away. There is one more picture from the art book that offers a little more insight into how the flame vent is constructed. Here you can see that the back stem part is getting slightly wider as it joins the flame vent itself, and at the start it has a diamond-shaped cross-section that later becomes round at its thickest part. The metal loop on the side of the flame vent is secured with ropes, and the little note says that the other side is constructed identically. Okay, we are drawing closer to Okinaga's flame vent, but we have to talk about pine resin ember first. Technically, it's an upgrade material, but it's unique like Phantom Kunai and Malcontent's ring, so we'll talk about it here. Its original name is Ksuburi Matsuyani, Smoldering Pine Resin. I think this name wouldn't fit due to the symbol restriction, that's why in English it's uh, amber. The Japanese description states, it is a piece of pine resin continuously smoldering with unquenchable flame. The localization doesn't really explain why people burn this special resin to find their way, but the original does. It refers to the forests as the forests that conceal Mibu village. So some time ago there were these black pines in the thick forests of Mibu village, and the resin taken from those pines when lit produced continuously smoldering flame that was used by people to navigate their way so they wouldn't get lost. The localization says that people of Mipo village came to loathe the flames. The original uses the word imi hajimeta, started tabooing. Imi in general has a lot of religious or cultural meanings like taboo, abstinence. It can refer to things prohibited by etiquette and describe things that are agreed upon as undesirable. Thus, I think here it implies that something major changed in Mipo village, so now they don't just hate the flames. Fire is a taboo, so they resorted to fireflies as means of lighting. However, not everyone in Mibu village agrees with this practice, as evidenced by Shosuke's dialogue, where he describes someone named Inuhiko, a village outcast and a hunter who eats animals, something that apparently is also considered inappropriate. He burns resin on top of his house, I'm guessing to keep his friendly neighbors away. Despite the fact that Shosuke has not yet lost his mind completely, he speaks of Inuhiko with disdain and describes his resin burning practice as imaimashi, annoying. I think this is meant to show you that since merely speaking of fire causes such a reaction from Shosuke, he might be too far gone already. I like how pine resin ties flame vent to Mibu village, in the same way many other items form associations between shinobi tools and certain characters or places, so none of them exist just by themselves. Shuriken wheel is tied to Dogen and Lady Butterfly with her phantom kunai, shinobi axe belonged to the sculptor, finger whistle to his partner, the spear was Gyobu's, and Sabimaru is associated with Okami and their attack on Ashina a long time ago. In the same fashion, flame vent can be associated with Mibu village, where fire used to be an indispensable tool for getting around and safely coming back home, but is now loathed, as well as people who bring it to the village. A big part of my excitement about researching prosthetic tools came from Okinaga's flame vent. Since there wasn't anything in the whole English localization of Sekiro that mentioned Okinaga even once apart from the title of this flame vent upgrade, I just assumed it was lost in translation and I will undoubtedly find something in the original text, you know, the story of Okinaga and his or her flame vent. Maybe Okinaga was someone from Mibu village who never gave up fire and stocked up on black pine resin, or maybe they were for some reason immune to the changes inflicted by the water. I had like a million ideas and was impatient to see what turn the epic tale of Okinaga takes. And then I looked at the original name of this upgrade. Ikinaga no Hifukitsutsu, Long Breathing Flame Barrel. You know, because now it can work as a flamethrower and continuously breathe fire, chipping away at your spirit emblems. Okinaga doesn't exist. Well, technically it can be read as Okinaga when it's a family name, but I highly doubt that's the case. This word consists of iki, breath, and naga, long. It's basically the same thing as the nagahibana upgrade of the firecracker that was correctly translated as long spark. This is literally long breath. Well, so much for the epic legend of Okinaga. 
During my research, I saw that many people were frustrated by Okanaga and the fact that there isn't a single mention of this person anywhere, and this frustration gave way to several theories, the most popular of which is that Inuhiko, the hunter from Mibo village that burns pine resin, is actually Okinaga Inuhiko. However, I don't think that's the case. It's very uncharacteristic of Sekiro lore to just drop a name and never give any remarks, any comments on the character beyond that. Even Lord Sakuza, god knows who this guy is, has not only a name but a dialogue and an associated item and two NPCs that are connected to him. I'm pretty sure that Okinaga doesn't exist at all and was born as a result of a localization mistake. So this version of Flame Vent is a fire-breathing barrel loaded with smoldering pine resin. This flame vent can maintain a continuous stream of fire. The main takeaway from this whole ordeal is that Okinaga doesn't exist, and the upgrade is literally called Ikinaga, long breath. One more mystery solved. Its original name is Rurino Joka, literally Lazy Light Sacred Fire, so the localization is on point. The first paragraph is identical to the previously discussed Lazy Light upgrades, all of them talk about the favor of the fountainhead Lapis Lazuli. Lazulite Sacred Flame is God's abode. The original line implies that the Lazulite Flame houses gods, or that it was blessed by gods. The localization opted for divine. The last line of the description is the most interesting one, and I think the localization did a great job translating it. Cleanse the deep-seated hatred with flame. Koro means to get absorbed in, to become obsessed with, and onen denotes hatred or deep-seated grudge, this word is basically a synonym of ensa, deeply held resentment. It's the word that Demon of Hatred has in his name, Ensa Oni. I haven't tried Lazy Light Sacred Flame on Demon of Hatred, I usually just use Suzaku's Umbrella and Malcontent, but the description of this flame vent upgrade very clearly tells you that you should try using it on the demon. If it was your prosthetic tool of choice when fighting him, please leave me a comment below and tell me whether it was effective or not. And that's all there is to discuss about the flame vents, so let's move on to the axe. Its original name is Tobizaru no Shinobi Ono, Shinobi Axe of the Jumping or Bounding Monkey. As both the original and the localized description state, this axe has two main traits. Its shape is unrefined and rustic, and it's very heavy, that's why it wasn't used so much for cutting or slicing things off, but for breaking and shattering. Tobizaru, Jumping Monkey, is one of the names of the sculptor. His shinobi nickname is Shoujo, Orangutan, or Shoujo, a Japanese sea spirit with red hair and red face who is particularly fond of alcohol. Sculptor's shinobi past might be in part based on Sarutobi Sasuke, who was a leader of the legendary group of ninja called Sanada Ten Braves. This group operated during Sengoku period, assisting Sanada Yukimura, a samurai warrior and the warlord. Sarutobi has the same two kanji as Tobizaru, but reversed. Sarutobi was known for his incredible agility, especially in trees, and if you remember, that is how the sculptor describes his training in the Sunken Valley when you give him the monkey boos. To run, to jump, to clash swords, where one slip would mean your doom. That was how we trained. We came to move exactly as monkeys did after a time. Sarutobi is also often portrayed as an orphan raised by a band of monkeys, hence his monkey-like abilities. This is also quite funny, because there is an actual band of monkeys in the Sanka Valley. Sarutobi Sasuke has an arch-rival and a best friend, another member of Sanada Ten Braves, Kirigakure Saizo. I got really excited, because I thought that maybe, if the sculptor was in any way inspired by Sarutobi, his partner Kingfisher might have been inspired by Kirigakure, Unfortunately, Kingfisher and Kirigakure don't have anything in common. Kirigakure's name literally translates to Hidden Mist, he's associated with fog and illusion magic, so he's more of a Lady Butterfly character. Or a Miss Noble character! Anyway, I can't say with any degree of certainty whether or not Orangutan the Shinobi was based on Sarutobi Sasuke, but it's an interesting parallel to explore nonetheless. Loaded Axe is Shikomi Ono. Shikomi has a lot of meanings, this prosthetic tool can even be translated as Training Axe, but I have nothing against Loaded Axe, it's consistent with Loaded Shuriken that we explored earlier. The localization is accurate, the original text draws the player's attention once more to the fact that the main feature of this axe is its weight. Of course, the axe also has a spring load upgrade, Shikomi Ono Baneshiki. The original description attributes the devastating sweeping attacks not only to the spring mechanism, but also to the axe's weight, 
so the attack isn't effective despite its weight, but rather because of its weight. The original literally says, power stored in the spring mechanism when joined by the weight of the axe allows for wide sweeping attacks. Its original name is Shikomyo no Hyutsushiki, where Hyutsi conveys the process of starting a fire creating sparks. It is a part of both Hyutsi, flint or firestone, and Hyutsigane, striker, a piece of steel used with flint to create sparks. Sparking axe is a great name for it. This version of the axe is upgraded with a percussion hammer that creates sparks. The localization is very accurate when describing how this upgrade works. The last line emphasizes that this axe now has both a heavy blade and a firearm power. If you look at the picture, you'll see that the axe is tightly secured to the metal loop that is attached to the prosthetic. There is also a groove at the top part of its blade, where the fire is started before it engulfs the edge. Only sparking axe and lazulite axe have it. Lazulite axe. I'm so excited about this one. Its original name is very simple, just Rudinono, lazulite axe. The little note says that this eroded and roughly made gap at the top of the blade is where the lapis lazuli is gathered. But that's not all that important, look at the blade. It has a part of a kanji engraved on both sides. It is a dog radical that is present in many kanji denoting animals, notably dogs, cats, and monkeys. Wolf, okami, and orangutan, shoujo, both share this part. I spent some time thinking what it should have been, a wolf or an orangutan kanji, and whether it was left ambiguous because Lazulite Axe upgrade can be made by either Wolf or the sculptor. And then I thought, well, why am I treating this inscription like something unfinished? Maybe it's complete, it's what it's supposed to be. This axe used to be the favorite weapon of Orangutan, and now it belongs to Wolf. It's incredible how these tiny details that are not even in the description card still manage to add details to the story. Oh, I love it so much! I know that not all the prosthetic tools and their upgrades are exciting to look at. Many of them are quite trivial and there is hardly anything that I can say about them except for their original names and possibly some interesting word choices. However, I still want to explore every single thing because, first of all, this is the very core of the World of Sekiro project, to look at everything and know the face of every kanji in the game. And secondly, sometimes we do find something exceptional in items with seemingly boring descriptions. Sometimes it's not even the description that makes the item exceptional, like in the case of Lazulite Axe. In the next video, we'll talk about Sabimaru and the Spear. Don't forget to check the description for relevant links and more reading. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.